what you're going to want to do first is get your half sheet of drawing paper, just like what you've been doing for the last couple of classes. Put a border of tape around this outside edge so your pictorial space for your drawing will be approximately 10 by 16. Um, and then you're going to want to set up a still life with either a banana, an apple, and something like a potato that's a neutral color. You're going to want to use fruits or vegetables or, an, or like an onion, like a, a yellow onion would be fine. Um, and then you're going to want to place them on some sort of cloth. It doesn't matter if it's a rag or a t-shirt or a towel or whatever. Um, just try to pick something that's fairly neutral. So if you can't get like a gray t-shirt, just any kind of color like blue, yellow, red, any of those colors that are light will kind of neutralize the ground for the forms sitting on it. Um, so you're going to want to set them up in a way where they're all going to be um, in contrast to each other. Um, and then when you start drawing, remember, what you don't want to do is, if this is my apple, and this is my banana, and this is my potato, and then this is my cloth that it's sitting on, remember, just like I've been talking to a lot of you, what you don't want to do is draw really small like this. You want to avoid this at all costs. You want to break the edge of the picture plane and you want to fill the entire page so you barely have any negative space. So with your vine charcoal, very lightly, just very, very lightly, make sure you use your vine charcoal and you don't use your black pastel or your charcoal pencil. With your vine charcoal, slowly find the structure of the composition. So immediately, I'm just gonna draw a line for the direction of the banana, okay? And then I'm gonna draw a line for the direction of the potato, and then I'm gonna draw a line for the direction of the apple. And then I'm gonna draw, I'm, now I'm drawing the back side of where I see that cloth, okay? So immediately what I've done is I'm, 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 I'm magnifying everything and I've blown up the scale of everything so all the emphasis will be on the subject matter itself, okay? And then after I do that, what I'm gonna to try to do is find the width of, we're gonna say the banana. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw where I think the apple is. Okay, now again, all I'm doing is I'm laying down shapes. I'm not thinking about detail. I'm not thinking about anything like that. I'm just trying to find the structure and the, and the proportions of where everything is. Okay, so now you can see how, how large I've made everything. And obviously I'm gonna refine this now. Um, but what's really important is that everything is blown up. I've, I've made it at, at least the, close to actual size, but even, amplified it even more, and I've laid out the basic structure of the drawing. And this is the cloth coming here. So I have all my big shapes on my page, very lightly done. I'm gonna look back and forth at my proportions. I'm gonna check them. And before I start adding any kind of value, I'm gonna make sure everything's correct in terms of the negative space, the shapes, everything. Okay, so again, I've filled the entire page. The subject matter is breaking the edge of the picture plane. So I've zoomed in, I've emphasized and focalized the subject matter as a grouping. This is the only negative space I have um, in terms of it not being relative to the rest of the still life itself. Okay, so I've broken everything into big shapes. This is the potato, this is the apple, this is the banana, and then this is the cloth surrounding everything. Okay. I also isolated the highlight and the apple. I'm not even going to touch that because that's going to be one of the lightest parts of the drawing. The same thing with this part of the banana. That too, I've isolated. I'm not going to touch that. That's going to be one of the lighter parts. There are different parts of the cloth that are lighter, 
Um, but the one thing I want you to want you to notice is, is that in terms of the local value and what, what we've talked about before, the banana relative to the potato and the apple is lighter, okay? Now, the underside of it, obviously, in value, um, that shadow is going to be probably very comparable to some value in the potato. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to differentiate between the three objects in terms of their local value. We know that the, that the apple relative to the banana and the potato is the darkest of the, of the three forms. And then, obviously, if you, if you look at it, if you're going to translate it into black and white, the potato is actually right in between the banana and the apple. Okay. Now, again, there's going to be different degrees that occur in terms of subtlety with value that are going to be comparable. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to, trying to give the viewer a sense that the apple's the darkest, the banana's the lightest, and the potato kind of falls right in between. So with my vine charcoal, again, I'm not going to use my black pastel. I'm going to use my soft vine charcoal. I'm immediately, because of the the cloth is gray. And what's going to happen is, is the variables in it, in terms of the shadows or the lighter parts, I'm going to be subtracted with my eraser for the lighter parts. And then if I need to be additive and going back and adding more vine charcoal, I will. But one of the things, I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is just lay down the gray for the cloth. Okay? Um, and, and what it's just going to be is just kind of like a neutral kind of light to medium gray. And I'm just gonna lay that down immediately to isolate all the main subject matter, okay? And again, I'm gonna be able to come back in here and start differentiating between the variables that are occurring in the different aspects of the cloth. Um, but I just, what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that you can start making distinctions between everything. And because that gray is so, it's gonna affect everything, the main subject matter, the banana and the apple and the potato so much. If I can see it visually, I can start making adjustments in terms of that in itself, meaning the cloth itself. Because the, because of it's the, because it's such a neutral gray, you can already see that there's parts lighter when I come back in, where I'm going to be additive with like that darker part of the shadow back there, okay. Um, but you can see a lot of things are happening where, <clears throat> um, because of the light, the way it's being illuminated on, on parts of it, that I'm going to be able to come back in with my eraser and start taking out those lighter parts when I go back and make all the subtleties occurring in the cloth itself. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay down a value for the potato, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, because remember, I'm trying to make a very clear distinction between the potato and the apple and the banana. I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker right now than the cloth itself, okay? So right off the bat, I'm telling the viewer that the, that the potato is darker than the cloth, okay? Now, again, there's going to be subtleties that happen with that um, when I go back in and, and refine stuff. But for right now, what we're looking at is that this is right now looks darker than these two. Now, with my black pastel, because I want to be able to visually make adjustments to everything, and I know the apple is going to be the darkest um, form in the drawing, I'm going to add... And remember, I isolated the highlight. I'm going to start adding the darkest parts of the apple, which are right behind the potato. Okay, now I'm not going to use this all the way through the apple, okay? Not yet. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, and remember, when you're doing value, you want to do, val you want to do edge next to edge. You don't want to outline anything. You want to really thinking about distinguishing edge next to edge, okay? So again, I, I will, I'm just, all I'm trying to do is make sure that I'm seeing things and separating things. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I am going to add the darker part of the underside of the plane of the banana that's basically 
and shadow. Okay, so now, and now what I'm gonna do is, just for the purposes, I'm not gonna use my black pastel, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use my vine charcoal, but I'm gonna to try to get it as dark as I can, which is gonna be like a really dark gray. And now I'm gonna to try to separate it from, remember I've isolated my highlight. I'm gonna go back and try to make that as detailed as I can later. Okay, but now I've made, and I not, again, I didn't use my black pastel. I only used my black pastel where I knew it's the darkest part of the drawing, which is like directly behind the potato. And then I left that part of the banana still really light. So right now I just have my very basic value structure. I have my gray for the cloth. I have my gray for the, for the potato. I have my pastel mixed with the darkest gray of my vine charcoal for the apple. I isolated the highlight. I have the darker part of the banana. Um, and then I have the background wall, which I'll, I'll talk about later. But this is exactly where you want to be at this. You, you don't want to, you want to work together cohesively with everything working together and you want to make adjustments to everything relative to each other. And, you, and again, the most important thing is you want to make a very clear distinction and contrast between the banana, the apple, and the potato. Okay, and then obviously the subtleties that are occurring in the claw. So just to reiterate, you're, you're going to be using through the whole drawing your very soft, fine charcoal stick. You're gonna be using your black pastel stick. You're gonna be using your kneaded eraser and your either your Statler eraser. Um, you're gonna be using a blending tool if you wanna blend certain areas, especially with edges that are kind of detailed, okay? Um, if you don't have a chamois, you don't wanna use your fingers, you can use um, tissue paper, okay, and then this will also, and just remember, when you're doing any kind of blending or anything at all with when you're working with charcoals, just really think about pressure, okay? When you blend with this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some of the vine charcoal off, um, and that's okay, but you will get very subtle transitions. So, and you can see when I'm blending, I do it in a circular motion. I don't do it roughly or go like this or do it really fast. Everything's about subtlety in terms of pressure. That's the most important thing about drawing. Just really think about pressure with all the tools, the erasers, um, your charcoals, everything, okay? Um, and then also know that with your kneaded eraser or your other erasers, you can come back in and you can start being subtractive where, where areas are gonna be lighter, okay? You can also use your click eraser if there's gonna be areas that you wanna um, do like very subtle edges and you want to sharpen things, okay? So you want to use all these different tools to help you create and start having the drawing emerge. Um, and then just also remember, you can go back and don't, in this drawing, if you're anything that's kind of gray or lighter gray or medium gray, I'm not going to use my black pastel. There's a couple parts in the back there where I might have like a little bit for the darkest part, but for the most part, all these other variables that I'm seeing um, with differentiations in um, the shadows that are being formed um, by the folds. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to be additive with my vine charcoal. I'm not going to be additive with my black pastel in only areas that are completely, almost literally black. Okay, and there's not that many parts occurring in this that are really that black. Okay, so you're going to want to use all these different tools and you're going to want to try to make this the most representational drawing you've done so far. Um, so you, this, these ideas concerning separation and contrast are really important. Subtleties in the different forms themselves. Um, as you can see on the, on the potato, there's little parts that, of, of texture that are coming through that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna add, okay? That are gonna be very, very, very subtle. So this drawing itself is kind of like, almost like a two and a half hour, three hour drawing. You don't want to go really fast. You don't want it to be messy. You want to try to make it as refined as possible. So you really, 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 really want to take your time um, and really, really look at the subject matter. Look back at your page. Look back and forth, back and forth, and just make sure that you're making as many 
variables as you possibly can and just try to do your absolute best to capture um, the representational qualities and bring that information back to the drawing. So I'm going to do um, a time lapse video now um, so I don't bore you to tears um, and you know just do the whole drawing for another hour or whatever. So remember, when you, remember, you're trying to basically make contrast between the three main forms. Um, now, when you're doing your cloth, depending on w what's happening with it, just know that you, know, you do a combination of laying down fine charcoal, using your eraser, and just being subtractive, taking light back in and out. And again, cloth is very difficult to do. I just, I just want you to try to be as interpreted interpretive with it as you possibly can um, and it's just a, it's a matter of blending taking out light being additive again with vine charcoal um, and then just trying to get you know variables and you, you basically blend on the edges of where the cloth is turning in and out I know I'm making that sound easy but uh, just as long as you just try to be interpretive really really use your erasers and your vine charcoal um, for the cloth and, and, and everywhere else too so when you're done with it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take the drawing outside. And one other thing is, is that if you notice on the top corner here, it's all white. You don't wanna leave the background white. So if you get a piece of tissue paper and you pick up some vine charcoal from part of your drawing somewhere, and then you just very basically just add like a little bit of value in the background, it's like a really, really, really light gray. So I'm just going like right up to the edges here. Because you don't want to leave it completely white. But you want to do this with a tissue or a chamois. Okay, and then you're going to spray your drawing outside about two or three feet away. Okay, and then as usual, let it dry for four or five minutes, and then you're going to want to take the tape off, like so. As I said, try to put your drawing, tape it on the back on a really nice wall that's light, or has really good light, um, and then photograph it um, the best way you can. So again, the main point of this drawing is to try to create a full range of value, strong contrast, and to tr differentiate between the three main forms in the drawing itself. Um, and then obviously try to work out um, what's happening with the variables on terms of what they're um, what they're sitting on. And as you can see on this, this edge, that little tiny bit of gray that I added actually opens up the pictorial space a little bit more because it's not completely white. 